Hi everyone! Since we're not at school, we're going to start doing some digital lessons on Google Classroom, so here's the first of many. Since we're not at school and you have some makeup work to do, we need to talk fractions. So this is going to be our crash course to everything having to do with fractions. So here we go. A fraction is an equal part of a whole. So this would be up on our math doc wall, but I take it down for now. So see how the word fraction is split up into two equal parts, four on the top and four on the bottom. So the key word is an equal part of a whole. Think division, because when we talk division, we talked about equal groups, right? A fraction has two parts. There's the top or the bottom. Okay, those are some pretty easy words to call them, but we have to call them by their real name, which is numerator and denominator. So if we take a look at one-sixth, our numerator is the number on top. So the numerator is 1. The denominator is the number on the bottom. One way that I like to remember this is denominator is downstairs because denominator and downstairs both start with D. So if that's an easy way for you to remember it, then great. So the bottom number of the fraction tells us how many equal parts are in the whole. So I drew an example. I've got one whole rectangle split into six equal groups. The top tells you how many of those equal groups are being described. So in my fraction 1 sixth, 1 is my numerator. So one part of the equal 6 is being described. So I could color in my 1 sixth. So if I'm asked to show a fraction 1 sixth, this is one way I could do it. A common example is using pizza. So if we had a piece of or a big pizza and we split it into six pieces and you ate one, you would have eaten one sixth of the whole pizza. And I'm going to have the answers and how to solve everything on Friday, but in order for you guys to do that and get it ready for Friday, I want you to have this video to teach you how to find equivalent fractions. Okay, so here we go. So fractions that look different but have the same value are equivalent. Okay, so if we start with one half, okay, the top is the numerator, that's one part out of two equal sections. Okay, so if I have two equal sections of my circle and I'm representing one by being colored in, that's one half. Okay, but what if I wanted to show one half differently? Okay, I could do that with a fourth, okay? Two fourths is the same as one half because if I split my circle into four pieces, and represent two of them by coloring them in, they look the same where they're colored in, but they have different sections. Does that make sense? Same thing for four eighths, okay? If I had eight sections and I represent only four of them by coloring them in, it's the same value as one half and two fourths. Okay, so the pictures are great and all, but we have to have some kind of numerical way to get there. So let's take a look. If I multiply something times 2, I should get 4. Okay, and if I multiply 2 times 2, I get 4. General rule for fractions. Anything you do to the bottom, you should do to the top as well. Okay, so if I multiply 2 times 2 to get 4, I can multiply 1 times 2 to get my 2. Okay, let's try it again. 4 times what is 8? Okay, it should be the same as the first time. Times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so then if we look at the bottom, this is a problem that's actually on your math review for this week. 1 times something equals our question mark. We don't know yet. We're trying to figure out what 1 third is equal to how many ninths. So I can start here. I have these two known numbers. 3 times something is 9. And we should know that right away because that's one of our quick facts. 3 times 3 is 9. Anything we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. So it should be that one third equals three ninths. So if you have your math paper, I would go ahead and fill that problem in so that you have the answer. 
Let's talk adding fractions. So if we add fractions, there's a couple different ways we have to think about this. If your denominators are the same, like 1 fourth and 2 fourths, you're good to go. All you have to do is add across the top. But if your denominators are not the same, you have to stop. I don't mean stop for good and give up on the problem. I mean we have to think this through. There's a certain way we have to do this. We need to get something called a common denominator. Common means the same, okay? So that means we have to have the same denominator. You might be asking, Miss Wilson, how do I do that? You need to teach me that first. Here's how you do that. We need to find something that can multiply by 10 to equal 20. Again, that should be a super fast fact, okay? We should get two. So if I multiply this times two, it becomes 20, okay? 20 and 20 are the same, so I now have a common denominator. But remember from last time when I was talking about equivalent fractions, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I multiply the bottom by 2, I need to multiply the top by 2 as well. So now I have this new fraction with two common denominators that I can add together. And it should look like this. 4 twentieths plus three twentieths. And I learned up top that if my denominators are the same, I add across the top and I'm good to go. My denominators are now the same, so I add across the top. Four plus three is seven over twenty, which was my new common denominator. So here's a problem you're going to see on your review paper. 4 tenths plus 3 hundredths. It wouldn't make much sense for us to change the 3 hundredths, so we have to change the 4 tenths. 10 times something has to equal 100. Okay, that's another super quick fact. If I think 10 times 10 equals 100, I should have a common denominator of 100. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 4 times 10 equals 40. So now I should have 40 over 100 plus 3 hundredths. Once I have a common denominator, I can add across the top, and I'm good to go. So 40 plus 3 is 43 over 100. You cannot forget your denominator. In order to have a fraction that looks smart, sounds smart, you need to have a numerator and a denominator in your answer. Otherwise, it won't make any sense at all. Because if I were to draw a picture of this, it would be 100 equal sections, and I would be representing 43 of them by coloring them in. It means the same as 43 over 100. Okay, so we need to talk about comparing fractions now. So we've talked about comparing numbers before with the greater than, the less than, and the equal to, and the alligators and all that. So now we're going to figure out how we can compare fractions. On our review sheet for week one work, we have one half, trying to figure out if it's greater than, less than, or equal to four-fifths. Okay, so one way we could do this is draw a picture, but if you're like me and you kind of struggle to get things even sometimes, that may not give you an accurate answer. Because okay, you have to make sure that you have five equal parts of the shape. And sometimes it's hard to get five equal parts. So here's a better way we can do this. Just like when we tried to find a common denominator to add fractions, we can find a common denominator to compare them. Okay, I can't multiply anything times two to get five equally. So I could find a number that would be a multiple of both of these. Okay, so the first one that pops into my head is ten. Two times 5 is 10, and anything I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So 1 times 5 is 5. Now how am I going to get my 5 to 10? I'm going to multiply by 2. 5 times 2 equals 10. Do the same thing to the top. 4 times 2 equals 8. So my new fraction then is 5 tenths which if we had our equivalent fractions would mean the same thing as one half, equaling eight 
tenths. Those two things don't equal up, so I know for sure we can get rid of that option. Now all I really have to look at is the 5 and the 8. Which one is greater? That's the way that we need to open our alligator's mouth. Okay, if we read this as a sentence, it would be 5 tenths is less than 8 tenths because our mouth needs to be open towards the larger number, just like if we were comparing numbers earlier in the year. So we need to look at subtracting fractions because that would be the next part of your review sheet. So when we subtract fractions, we want a common denominator, just like we did when we compared and when we added the fractions. So we already have the common denominator. They were nice to us this time. So all we have to do is look at the top, which is 7 minus 2. Okay, so this turns into a really easy subtraction problem. 7 minus 2 is 5. What if I had a different denominator? What do you think I would have to do? If I had something like this, I would need to figure out how to solve it using a common denominator or finding that least common multiple like we just found when we compared fractions. So if you want to give this problem a go, you can send me the answer in Google Classroom and I'll check your work. Okay, let's talk about converting mixed numbers so you're set up for success when it's time to do your review packet. So a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction combined into one mixed number. So if I look at my example of 3 and 1 fourth, my whole number is the 3, my fraction is the 1 fourth, and they're put together. But sometimes I need to know how to add these two things together. Or maybe I need to make it a uh, improper fraction, which would be where I have a bigger number in my numerator than in my denominator. So let's take a look at how to find that. If I'm looking at 3 and 1 fourth, I multiply 4 times 3, which is 12. And then I add the answer to that, which is 12, to the 1. So I multiply the denominator times my whole number to get a new answer, which was 12 and then I add 12 plus my numerator, which was 1, to give me 13 fourths. So now I have an improper fraction where I have a greater number in my numerator than in my denominator. Let's try again. 2 and 2 fourths, which means the same as 2 and a half if we're looking at our equivalent fractions. I multiply 4 times 2, which gives me 8. 8 plus 2 more is 10. So my improper fraction is 10 fourths, 10 being my numerator, 4 being the denominator. So you can convert them on your review packet. You have these two numbers and they're wanting them added together. If I added them together, I could do 13 fourths plus 10 fourths. My bottom stays the same because I have a common denominator. 13 plus 10 is 23. So I hope the quick blast of fractions kind of helped you a little bit. If you still have questions, you can email me from your school email or you can have your parents contact me on Remind. Stop, Caitlin. <laughs> I hope the quick intro to fractions helped you. Um, if you have other questions, you can always look online for other resources. You can get practice on Google Classroom. There's different resources. And you can have your parents email me, or you can email me from your school email with any questions you might have. Good luck on your review packets, and I will for sure see you Friday for our review of the review packet for math, and maybe tomorrow for our whole class Kahoot game at 2 o'clock. Check back for Google Classroom for more information. Bye, guys.